to have at our show from probably Monster Mania number two forward. Um, I first saw Halloween in the, in the theater during the first run, um, basically because I was a Hammer Horror fan, and I saw the name Donald Pleasance, and I was like, whatever Donald Pleasance went in, I wanted to go see. He was one of my favorite actors. And I saw Halloween, and I was totally blown away. I mean, it was like, I mean, they've done a lot of sequels now, and, and there's been a lot of movies that are made in a similar vein. But when that came out and you saw that in the theater, I mean, it was, it was, it really was something. And, it, and thankfully, it, it found an audience, and it has, you know, a hundred years from now, when they say, you know, what's the top ten horror films, you know, of modern time, that's going to be in the top ten for sure. Uh, it's a tremendous film, and uh, it, it's a great honor for me uh, to welcome the next guest, Nick Castle. Also, uh, before, we uh, before we start, I wanted to, uh, there's a person in the wings on the side there uh, that really made this happen. Uh, he, yep, Sean Clark. <laughs> So we'll do like we normally do, and just uh, if you have a question, raise your hand. We'll get right into the questions. Who has one right here? What is the deal with Halloween 3? <laughs> the deal with Halloween 3? Wait a minute, let me look around. Is the, is the director of Halloween 3 here? He said he was coming. Tommy Wallace, you can answer that question better than me. He'll be here. We'll get back to that question. Let, let's let's put a pin in that one for a sec. Right here. Uh, while filming Halloween, did you realize that this was going to be such a huge success? Like, did you want to repeat the question? Oh, okay. Uh, the question was when when Nick was filming Halloween, uh, did he was, was he aware that it was it had to potentially become the iconic film that it has. No, I, I thought, uh, I, I, I just hope uh, John would not be embarrassed, one, and two, that he would make his money back and he'd get to do another movie. <laughs> had absolutely no idea. Back here. How do you feel about Rob Zombie's version? I see, I anticipated that, so guess what I did? No, I have not seen, here's, the, you know, I was the killer, uh, uh, but, in the first one, but I've only seen Hollywood, ha Halloween 2 and 3, uh, only because my friend directed it, and uh, have not seen the rest of them, up until I thought maybe I should see this one. On the way in, I got it, I downloaded it on my iPad, bad place to watch it on a plane, first of all. <laughs> Not a good idea to watch that movie on a plane for the simple reason that if someone next to me, which they did, has their window open half the time, you know, you're not going to see a lot of the movie. It's so dark, you know, it's, it's trying to be su a suspenseful. But in any case, what I saw of it, I, you know, I, I thought I didn't understand why go to the big guy, you know, the big figure. I didn't understand that. And since actually some people have made the point, and I didn't think of it at the time while I was watching it, but I thought it was. Uh, well thought through that there is something problematic about making it a psychological uh, thriller. In other words, knowing what the background of the, ch of the killer is. So that was a major decision be have been made and it takes away somewhat from the kind of, uh, you know, the mystery of the character. So in that sense, although I thought much of it was wa very watchable, I thought it was, you know, you know, it's more in the, the vein of contemporary horror, uh, a lot bloodier and stuff like that. And I thought, very frankly, much less suspenseful than the kind of work that John did so well in, in, in the first one. Uh, right here? In your opinion, uh, what is the color of the cover 
What is the color of the coveralls that were used, in my opinion? Jeez. I remember them as kind of bluish gray. Why? Am I wrong? You guys will know me better than I. Over here? What was it like working with some of the main folks on the, on the movie? Well, first of all, I, I'd known John Carpenter from film school. We, bo we both went to USC film school together. We had done films together at USC film school, so we were, we were buddies. And that's one of the reasons I was on the set, for that matter. Uh, just to kind of uh, check out, see how, what he was doing. I wanted to do, direct my own movie, so I thought this would be a, a nice way to kind of, uh, you know, stick around a set and kind of demystify the experience for myself. Uh, Deborah, uh, I knew from John, they were together uh, uh, pretty soon, I think around then, and so I knew her as John's mate, and she uh, was a wonderful person and uh, very talented and remained so during the course of it. Jamie Lee was really a lot of fun. You know, it was her first movie. She didn't appear nervous at all, as I recall, and she just was having a ball, you know? And it was fun because she was one of the people that, you know, as fellow actors, you know, we sat around kibitzing during the course of Dean Cundy's lighting and, uh, and uh, had a great time. But uh, there was, uh, you know, it was one of those productions and you always uh, dream of these things where there was very, I, I can't remember one argument, you know, on the set. And John runs a, a, not only a disciplined set, but a fun set and he's very, um, very supportive of both the actors and the technicians. Very supportive, and it's it, it, you could feel that uh, in the course of the of the show. 